Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I'm here with the five mistakes that rookie sports bettors make. So by fixing some of these mistakes, not only can you save yourself from losses, but you're more than likely going to become profitable just by fixing these five simple mistakes. So I'm going to get right into it, guys. The first mistake, and I talk about this all the time, is bankroll management. People overbet. They chase, um, they bet more than their bankroll can support. So I'm just going to go through that really quickly with you guys. If you haven't seen my full video on bankroll management, uh, search for it. It's on here. Um, it'll go in depth about bankroll management. But basically, guys, you never want to bet more than 5% of your account on any game, no matter how much you like it. So there's three basic levels of sports bettors. You have your professional sports better. Uh, that's someone who's going to bet for a living. You have your casual sports better with a fixed bankroll. And then you have your casual sports better uh, with basically a variable bankroll, something that they're willing to add to. So right off the bat, your professional sports better will be betting between half a percent to one percent of their bankroll per game. Um, there are a few a few games where you might find a professional that's going to bet one and a half percent but it's very rare to see a professional bet more than one and a half percent of your account and 95 percent of your games are going to fall within half a percent to one percent your next level is your casual sports better who has a fixed bankroll so fixed bankroll is you have a set amount that you have set aside that you can wager for an entire year so that better is going to want to bet between one to three percent of your bankroll. So one to three percent per game of your bankroll. The next better is that's your casual better who has a variable bankroll. And by variable, I mean it's a sports better who's willing to put in more money as the year goes on. And those betters can bet one to five percent of your bankroll. So by betting one to five percent of your bankroll and constantly adjusting the bankroll as your as your or sorry adjusting your bet size as your bankroll increases or decreases uh you're going to be able to stay in the game and you're not going to have to worry about blowing up your account or risk of ruin so it's very important guys very very important that you stick to proper bankroll management uh i know deep down inside there's you know that tendency to want to push when you're winning and and even worse push when you're losing but absolutely don't do it guys if you stick to that Believe me, you'll be a lot more successful. All right. Second, guys, um, don't bet for the wrong reason. All right. Make sure that you have an edge in the game. And that's a mistake a lot of rookie sports bettors make. They find a game like, you know, Monday Night Football game or, you know, just a team that they like and they want to watch the game. They want to enjoy it. So they bet on. That is the absolute wrong reason to be betting on sports. You should be betting on sports so you can make money. And yes, I agree, it is more enjoyable when you have money on it. But just think how much money you'll save by you know, not forcing yourself to bet on a game where you don't think you have an edge. So that, that's number two, guys. Um, again, don't bet for the wrong reasons. All right, number three, you have to treat sports betting like a business. It's not good enough to just randomly throw out your sports bets and hope for the best and you know at the end of the month or end of the year hope you're up. You have to track your sports bets. So not only do you have to track your wins and losses every day, but you have to track your wins and losses on a weekly, monthly and annual basis. And to go further into that, you actually have to break it down by sport. So you have to understand what your win loss record is in hockey, in baseball, in football. and that way you can actually see what areas you need to improve on and also the areas where you're excelling and if you're if you find over a long period of time you're excelling at one sport maybe you want to be betting at the high end of your bankroll in that sport and other sports you might find that you're not even profitable and you might want to lay off or reevaluate your betting decisions guys so that's number three guys treat it like a business all right um all right number four is don't bet against streaks. So there's a lot of streaks in sports. You find that, you know, teams go on long winning streaks, long covering streaks. You really, you ultimately don't want to bet against those unless you have really good information or really good systems that'll tell you otherwise. Reason being is if you bet with a streak and a team go, let's say a team's on a five game winning streak and 
you know, they end up going on an eight game winning streak. Well, you can be right, you know, two, three, four, five, six times in a row during that streak. And you can only be wrong once, right? So if you're betting against a streak, it's very difficult because you have to be right the very first time. So it is important, guys, um, you know, teams are streaky and, and teams do go on winning streaks and it is good. Um, you know, I'm not saying bet with every streak, certainly don't do that, but don't bet against the streaks. All right. And, uh, finally guys, um, and this is a really big one. So lay off parlays and teasers. Do not bet parlays and teasers. And I've said this before, I don't bet parlays and teasers under any circumstance. Okay, there's no circumstance where you should ever have to bet a parlay or a teaser. Betting a parlay or teaser, you're giving up a tremendous house edge, a huge house edge. And just to give you an idea, a five team parlay, you have a 35% house edge. That means on average, for every $100 that you bet, you will lose $35. Now, in comparison, if you were 50-50 on all your games on like a coin flip on every game, if you bet $100 on every single straight game, you're gonna lose on average about $5. So there's about a 5% house edge on straight games where on a five-team parlay is 35%. Parlays are a sucker's bet. And I will say this, that professional sports bettors do not bet parlays. Parlays are a huge profit center, same with teasers. Parlays and teasers are a huge profit center for sports books. And they love parlays and teasers. And that's why you see so many sports books run promotions where they, you know, they'll give you better, slightly better odds on parlays or teasers because they want to entice you to bet those. Um, you know, there's a reason why in Vegas that, you know, you can get limited on how much you're betting on games. But it's very rare for a sports book to limit how much you're going to bet on a three, four, five, six game parlay. They'll let you bet pretty much whatever you want within reason. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you stop betting parlays, um, you'll be much further ahead. So that's that's basically the five mistakes that rookie bettors make. And not just rookies, any bettors, to be honest with you. So if you follow those five guidelines, guys, you're going to be much, much better. So if you make a commitment to yourself to follow that, you're going to come out much further ahead than if you go against these. All right. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. And always, guys, have a very lucky day.